Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're examining our picks for the 10 times the BBC was forced to apologise. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at infamous moments caused by the British broadcaster in their history where they had to eat humble pie by saying how sorry they were. What's the biggest BBC scandal in your view? Let us know below. Football Slander 2022 If you were watching the BBC News Channel in May 2022, you'd have noticed something odd with the news ticker at the bottom of the screen. Typically showing headlines, one cropped up that claimed Manchester United are rubbish. Cue the outrage from United fans and laughter from other football team supporters. On top of that, the message, weather, rain everywhere, also appeared. After these moments went viral on social media, news presenter Anita McVeigh soon apologised to viewers for the comment. And I hope that Manchester United fans weren't offended by it. She stated someone was being trained to operate the ticker and was writing various random messages. Unfortunately, thanks to a technical glitch, it went out on the live broadcast by mistake. So apologies if you saw that and you were offended and you're a fan of Manchester United, but certainly that was, you know, a mistake and it wasn't uh, meant to appear on the screen. Miriam's Mess, 2022. Miriam Margulies is a national treasure. With the actor's no-nonsense approach, she's captured the hearts of many people. Well, with all the governmental changes, she was invited onto Radio 4's Today programme to discuss Jeremy Hunt's appointment as Chancellor of the Exchequer. After mentioning that she met Hunt, Margulies then told the presenters what she actually wanted to say to him, which was filled with expletives. The presenters quickly apologised as Margulies was removed from the airwaves. Oh, no, 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 you mustn't say that. But you can't say that. Yes, no, you can't say that. You've got to, we'll have to have you out of the studio now. Another time curse words slipped through the BBC's net involved Rishi Sunak becoming Prime Minister. The news channel showcased a word cloud describing Sunak's qualities. However, two of those words definitely weren't appropriate for daytime TV. So the Beeb issued an apology afterward. Savanta Comrades, a polling research company, came up with a word cloud and people sent in their thoughts. Danger Journalist, 2013. Sometimes the BBC has been known to potentially put others in danger to get a scoop. So, welcome to the real North Korea. In 2013, society students at the London School of Economics undertook a trip to North Korea. Seeing an opportunity to document life in a mysterious dictatorship, the corporation got sneaky. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm glad to meet you uh, here in Pyongyang. They sent several crew members incognito on the voyage to film Panorama, North Korea undercover, without the university or students knowing. Such as reporter John Sweeney pretending to be a university professor. If they were found out, this could have meant imprisonment by the North Korean authorities or something more lethal for the whole group. The BBC's Editorial Standards Committee soon investigated the devious plan. Unsurprisingly, they found some issues. So, in 2014, they apologised to LSE for their actions. Slur use, 2020. There are just some words you don't say in the news. In July 2020, social affairs correspondent Fiona Lambden was in Bristol to do a segment on a horrific, racially motivated attack. As she was explaining the story and talking about phrases used, Lambden uttered a slur. Because as the men ran away, they hurled racial abuse. Rather than redo the voiceover, the BBC put it out. Immediately, viewers were shocked by the callous way the corporation said such a word. Over 18,000 complaints were made about Lambden's report. Initially, the BBC tried to defend it, the Director-General of the BBC at the time, Tony Hall, later apologised in an email to staff in the aftermath. However, that didn't fix everything. One extra DJ Sideman resigned in protest over the grim incident. That's why, effective immediately, I'm leaving my job as a radio broadcaster for BBC One Extra. With no apology, I just don't feel comfortable being aligned with the organisation. Mexican Stereotyping, 2011 when Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond and James May were at the Top Gear helm, they often made inappropriate comments that drew the ire of nations. But this incident was on another level. In 2011, 
During a segment on Mexican cars, the trio made jokes that compared the cars to racist stereotypes about the country. Mexican cars just going to be a lazy, feckless, flatulent over <laughs> They also insulted their food and the ambassador to the UK as they attempted to one-up each other's comments. They can't do food, the Mexicans, can they? Because it's all like sick with cheese on it. I mean, <laughs> refried sick. Yeah, refried sick. Many Mexican viewers complained to the BBC. The ambassador, Eduardo Medina Mora y Casa, wrote to the company questioning the outrageous, vulgar and inexcusable insults. I'm sorry, but just imagine waking up and remembering you're Mexican. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. It'd be brilliant because you, you could just go straight back to sleep again. <laughs> oh, I'm a Mexican. I'm oh, I'm a Mexican. Oh, I'm going to do all day. The BBC apologised to the ambassador for any offence caused. They also claimed stereotyping nations is just part of the UK culture. Yikes. Geldof and the Weapons, 2010 in March 2010, BBC World Service made a shocking report. Their journalists discovered that 95% of financial donations made to ease the famine in Ethiopia during the 80s were used by its government to purchase weapons. Well, it would have been shocking had it been true. Bob Geldof and the Band-Aid Trust attacked the corporation for its dodgy reporting and the damage it could do in Africa. Initially, the BBC insisted their report was accurate and promised to showcase their evidence. Only, that didn't happen. Instead, they realised their proof was lacking. So seven months later, in November, they reversed their comments and apologised for the segment. And that's what's forced the BBC to make this apology and admit that the programme was misleading and untrue. Transphobic Article 2021 The BBC likes to bring up its impartiality. However, in October 2021, that rule was seemingly thrown out of the window when they released an article by Caroline Lowbridge titled, We're Being Pressured Into Sex by Some Trans Women. To make it worse, they included comments by Lily Cade, who has made violent threats against the trans community, as well as a biased poll from the anti-transgender group Get The L Out. This sparked thousands of complaints and 20,000 signatures demanding the BBC apologise for the article. Several protests erupted at their headquarters across the country. Even their own employees were reportedly critical of the article. The BBC eventually admitted it didn't meet accuracy standards. While they haven't directly apologised, they did alter the piece. Abuse Accusations 2012 In November 2012, BBC's Newsnight released a howling piece exploring the North Wales child abuse scandal. Within the segment, an unnamed Conservative MP is accused of grim crimes in the 1970s. Due to its strong hints in the report, people online immediately began looking at Lord Alastair McAlpine, who immediately denied the accusation. Soon after, the accuser saw a photo of the former House of Lords member and realised their mistake. Today he had seen a photograph of Lord McAlpine online and that it was not the man. The following month, McAlpine took the BBC and ITV who also promoted the accusation, to court for defamation. But it wasn't me. He won damages amounting to £310,000. The BBC then issued a public apology for the distress they caused McAlpine. Misinterpreting Hate 2021 In November 2021, a video on London's Oxford Street showing a Hanukkah party bus full of Jewish passengers receiving anti-Semitic abuse from a group of men went viral. When the BBC reported on the incident, they claimed the passengers had uttered anti-Muslim slurs in response. Well, this wasn't true. What they had actually said, in Hebrew, were pleas for help. When the truth came out, Several groups, such as the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism and the Board of Deputies of British Jews, slated the reporting, sparking a protest at the corporation's headquarters. The BBC soon amended the report and added a correction to the inaccuracies. They then issued an apology for their article. That Interview 2022 In 1995, BBC's Panorama scored the scoop of the century with the episode an interview with HRH, the Princess of Wales. It was isolating, but it was also um, a situation where you couldn't indulge in feeling sorry for yourself. You had to either sink or swim. Watched by nearly 23 million people, 
The interview conducted by Martin Bashir gave an inside look at the royal family through Diana. However, in 2020, several documentaries criticised the interview's integrity. Do you think Mrs Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. It turned out that Bashir had faked financial documents which he showed Earl Spencer in order to get access to his sister Diana. On top of that, the interview alleged that royal nanny Alexandra Pettifer had an affair with Charles during his marriage to Diana. Pettifer won substantial damages from the BBC after a court case in 2022. The BBC issued a public apology to Pettifer and the royal family in the aftermath. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.